so hi and welcome to another video so today i will actually be starting on a new project it will also be in sfml so here you can see my trello workspace it was actually a pretty long time since i used trello but i've decided to bring it back to you know have everything planned before i started the actual uh, game development I didn't do this in my last project, the breakout arcade game, and it was it was complete chaos. I, I can't even believe that I managed to complete that game. So this time I will be, you know, doing everything in Trello and it's actually a public workspace. So I will leave the link down below if you are interested to check out this workspace. But yeah, so the plan for the game is going to be very simple it will just be a simple survival shooter it will be a platformer as well so you will have uh, different types of weapons and different types of enemies and your objective is to survive for as long as you can that is the literal core of the game there's it, it will be very simple i mean okay i said the same thing about breakout but it turned out to be like two to three months of game development so hopefully this one will take a bit less time but we will see and you can already see that uh, i've done some stuff so currently i'm doing the items and i'm already finished with the entities and so on so how the system will actually work is there will be a entities base class right so everything that we want to render into the screen is going to be derived from the entities class now we will also have class that is derived from entities that are called items and these are the things that we want to that is that we can pick up and place in our inventory right and from items we can also derive weapons and then from weapons we can derive different types of weapons so like I don't know what pistol shotgun and so on and then if I want to I can also add power-ups right as you can see I I put it in I might add but this can also be derived from items then other things that can be de derived from entities are for example the player and bullets and also enemies and then from the enemies there will be different types of enemies that derive from the enemies class so everything is connected with the entities class and this will have some like virtual functions and some variables that all of the entities will share so let me show you how how much i've done so far if I just start and you can see in the console I actually created a FPS counter which is very cool and so you can see if I go outside the window it, it prints out and if I collide it also prints out to the console I also made this a bit smooth uh, kind of movement and that's what I did in this last a week so let's show you some of the code that I created so far. So this is the entity class and you can see that it has some some kind of variables and these are for example the name, tag and also an index. So every every entity will have a different index. Then I have some virtual functions and some aren't pure virtual functions so they don't have to be derived from the entity class for example the update and fixed update which i will tell you show about you later on they don't have to be derived by all of the entities class for example we also have a rectangle class which is i mean it's it's a simple rectangle right uh it, it doesn't do anything it's like a you can think of it like an environment a platform and we don't need to call update on this function so that's why some of the functions aren't pure virtuals but for example our render is because we want 
everything that's derived from the entity class to have its own render function that draws to the screen. And then also the get global bounds is also every, everyone needs to implement this in their own class. I have also created a physics class. So this is just to keep everything, you know, clean. So it is, it is a static class basically. And as of right now, it just has like gravity and friction, which currently only the player uses, but later on enemies will use this as well. And then also a, a is colliding function, which is very simple. So all we do is we check if object one intersects object two. And if it does, we can just return true, otherwise false. So taking a look at our main.cpp file, we can see there's a, a lot of going on, right? So we, we are creating the window and then we're also setting the key repeat to false. So if I hold down a, for example, an E, it doesn't just uh, return true every frame. It just returns true once. And that will be useful for something I will show later on. Then I create a new entity pointer, which is called player. Also called yeah the player class. I will I will show you the player class a bit later, and we give it also the entity index, which is just an unsigned int. Then I also have this tracker for FPS, and it works by. Uh, this counter FPS that just adds the current delta and if that counter FPS is larger than one second technically then we just print out the FPS and we reset everything and then it continues doing the same thing then we also have a update functions and before that I'm sorry we also have the fixed update which I will show you how it one thing but well, one very good thing about fixed updates is that we can actually control how often per second it gets called so right now I have the value to 0.02 f which means that it will get called 50 times every second and this is good because it's consistent right it doesn't it's not like w one second is like 3500 the other second is like 4,000, and this is especially good for everything physics related, which again, I will show you later on how it works. And then, yeah, if uh, we, and here's the physics function. So if it does, if we're colliding with this object, then we can just print it out. And yeah, we're currently not doing anything with it, but physics will come later. I actually forgot to mention, but I also added an item class as well. So it also derives from the entity and it currently holds a shape. And as in our constructor, we take in a fill color, but we could take in like a texture 2D. So we can have like a texture, like an image of our weapon or something like that. And then in our main.cpp right now for debugging purposes, if I click the button E, I will spawn in a new item. So we first get the mouse position and then spawn the item with that mouse position. And we'll also like color red and we also increase the entity index. So if we run this and if I press E, as you can see, it spawns in a new item. Now I can do this many, many times. And you can see that the first item actually got an index of three. Now that is because our player and our object also has entity index and it increases. So our player has the entity index one, this object has an entity index of two, and then the item comes in with the starting of three. So I just wanted to mention, I also added like the items as well. All right, let me talk you through our player class. So as I mentioned before, it derives from the entity class and we're going to have quite a few variables, right? 
So here are some of the four moving player. And then we also have a current position, which updates every update call, right? Every time we call the update function, it gets up. It, <laughs> the, the position gets updated every time we call the update function. Oh my God, that is difficult to say. And then we also have a rectangle shape, which yeah, obviously holds our current uh, shape and also the size of the shape. And here we have some booleans for checking. So is player jumping or have we have we pressed the A button or have we pressed the D button and so on. But then this is then we have these derived functions right from our entity class, which this entity actually needs because we want to, you know, call update every frame. But like I mentioned before, our rectangle doesn't need it because there's no need to update it every frame. And yeah, I also added this outside the window, which the player will technically not need because we will have window barriers that will make sure that the player doesn't go outside of the window. But I just added it just to show you that it actually works. Then in our player CPP file, as you can see in our constructor, we are setting the moving speed and jumping speed to some something. And then we're also setting the name and the tag, right, which we get from our entity class. And then in our update function, this is where we get the actual input from the user. And we don't set it, we don't set the velocity. This is what I did before I created the fixed update. But it felt very uh, laggy, I would say, and not very consistent. So I just set the boolean equal to true. And then also if the user presses W, well then we set is jumping. And this is the window barriers. Currently it's only the uh, bottom one that we check. And then if that is equal to true, I mean, if we are on the bottom, then we set is jumping equal to false. And then we also going to check are we outside of the window? Like I mentioned, this we this is really necessary. But for example, for our bullets, if if the bullet is outside outside of the window, well, then we want to do something. We want to delete the bullet. So, yeah, and then our fixed update here we can actually check okay so are we moving left well then we can set the velocity to negative moving speed and so on and then i also created this uh, there's quite a lot of stuff here but it's mainly making a much more smoother smoother so uh when i stop holding d you can see that it comes uh, to a stop very smoothly if you understand kind of what I'm trying to say. But yeah, that's basically this thing right here. And here we have the friction variable that we get from our physics class. Ah, oh, man, the, there's a lot of talking. I'm sorry, I'm getting thirsty. <laughs> so, but if, if we are jumping, well, then we can also set the y equal to negative jumping speed and then setting the physics gravity as well so that the player goes down and then yeah i mean that is all i have to show for today we can i can start the game another time and you can see that well it everything works very beautifully for the first time but yeah that's all i have to show for today if you made it this far thank you so so much make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and yeah see you next time bye bye